Hey folks, I'm Red Monster SC, and in this video, we're going to cover what makes Quantanium Mining so difficult, how to manage those challenges, and how to turn yourself into a Quantanium Mining Master. So stick around to learn everything you need to know about mining Quantanium in Star Citizen. I've broken the video timeline up into chapters, so check the description for specific timestamps or hover over the progress bar to skip ahead. So let's get started. Quantanium is the most valuable ore you can mine in Star Citizen, earning you more than double the revenue per unit compared to any other ore and allowing you to earn 250,000 UEC per load in a MISC prospector and up to 700,000 UEC per load in an Argo mole. However, there are three major challenges that you need to manage when mining Quantanium. Handling, time, and instability. First is handling, which refers to how the material responds to impacts. If you land too hard, or if you accidentally bump into something while flying, it could be enough to trigger a chain reaction in the stored raw Quantanium you're transporting, resulting in your ship and your entire hull exploding. If you're a halfway decent pilot exercising caution, this shouldn't be a problem, just don't be surprised if you see your cargo stability drop a few percentage points after you take a hard bump. Next is time. As soon as you start collecting unrefined quantanium, a 15 minute timer starts, and it will continue ticking down towards zero until the material goes critical and explodes. The exact time varies based on additional factors like material stability, server performance, and whether your ship is stored at a station and a series of alarms will let you know when things are progressing from bad, to serious, to deadly. The estimated timer will show up on the bottom right of your HUD while in mining mode, right next to the cargo stability percentage. You will have the option to jettison your cargo if you know you're going to run out of time. And last, but most important, is instability, which refers to the change in charge level in a rock when laser power is being applied to it. Rocks with low instability numbers have a very predictable response to laser power, while rocks with high instability will have charge rates that fluctuate wildly. Pure Quantanium has an instability of 10, which makes it difficult or even impossible to keep within the optimal zone when mining, causing you to overcharge the rock, which will then explode. Are you sensing a bit of a theme here? Good you can overcome the high instability of Quantanium with the right equipment. You can mine Quantanium in either the Prospector or the Mole, but because of the limited time you have between when you start collecting and when you need to hit the refinery, it's rare that you'll be able to find a deposit with enough Quantanium to fill a Mole in one shot. For this reason, I recommend sticking with a Prospector for most of your Quantanium mining activities. The exception would be if you have a good group of scouts that can either feed you information on mole-worthy quantanium clusters, or multiple prospectors that can get the quantanium extraction ready and allow the mole to quickly jump in and scoop up the raw material. It's good to have friends. Whether you're in a prospector or a mole, the mining laser and mining modules you choose should all be geared towards reducing instability. I recommend the Lancet mining laser which gives a 75% reduction to instability, as well as a 75% reduction to resistance and 40% increase to the optimal window size. These three bonuses alone make the Lancet Mining Laser my preferred choice for general mining applications and the standalone choice when mining Quantanium. I would pair it with three VO C3 passive modules for their 10% reduction in instability. The 4% decrease in optimal charge window isn't enough to offset the Lancet Mining Laser's bonuses. Optionally, you could swap one of the VO passive modules with the Brandt Active Module, which grants a temporary 75% reduction in instability for those extra difficult rocks. However, you should be cautious of the 25% reduction to charge rates since you'll need to spend longer in the optimal window in order to fracture the rock. I find it easier to get the first break without needing much assistance, but if you get fragments of 100% Quantanium, they can be very difficult to manage due to their high instability. That's when I'd use the Brandt Active Module. If you've got other recommendations for lasers and modules for Quantanium mining, I'd love to hear about them in the comments section. This table shows where Quantanium can be found, both on planet surfaces 
and deep space locations, as well as which locations have the best chances of finding Quantania. Spawn rates can vary, but I've had great luck surveying on the moons of Microtech for surface Quantanium deposits. Quantanium is visually distinct from other types of ore deposits due to its orange marbling. You can use this to identify it without requiring a scan. So if you're looking for Quantanium, but the ore deposit you're approaching does not have any orange marbling, then you can be assured that it won't contain Quantanium. Like and subscribe now if you're enjoying this video, and leave a comment if you notice anything that isn't clear or might have changed in future versions. So you have your ship ready, you've picked out all the right lasers and modules, and you're staring down that Quantanium rock. Let's get to mining. For a general guide to the mining process, check my previous video on the actual process of mining, since it's going to work the same for any mining vehicle. You're going to use the same laser power management techniques that video teaches you, but there are some specifics to Quantanium mining that you need to keep in mind. The order of operations matters a lot more with Quantanium, since you only get 15 minutes once you start collecting to get the raw material back to the refinery. If you make the mistake of collecting materials too early, it could mean the difference between a successful run and having to jettison all your cargo or watching your ship blow up. The 15 minute time limit is doable, but you want to get all the fragments ready for extraction prior to collecting anything. A good tip before you start breaking the rock down is to have your refinery already set as your quantum travel destination, so that when you're ready to head back, you'll know exactly where to go. This might only save you a few extra seconds on the timer, but it helps to get you in a preparation mindset. The parent rock could have a moderately high instability value, depending on what percentage quantanium it contains but it's the fragments that break off of the parent that we'll be the most concerned about. And always remember, don't start extracting until all your fragments are ready. If you get a good break, you might get a few fragments with 100% quantanium, and those will have an instability of 10. These are where you'll want to use your Brant Active Module if you have one equipped. Interestingly enough, this is also where most players that are new to quantanium mining are going to start scratching their heads and deciding to check out YouTube tutorials before continuing on. If that's you, welcome! Leave a comment below saying, I'm a new quantanium miner, and let me know how your mining expedition goes after watching this video. If you get a bad break, the quantanium will be mixed across several fragments in various percentages. The good news is that the instability numbers will be a lot more manageable. But the bad news is, you may get a lot more filler material when it's time to start extracting. Now you've got all your quantanium broken up into extractable fragments, this is when you can finally start extracting them. Start with the best percentages first, or just scoop up everything if it's a small enough rock that you know you won't fill up. If you've extracted everything you can, then head back to the refinery. Once you start extracting quantanium, you'll notice a timer appear in the cargo display table starting at 15 minutes time until critical and counting down, as well as a cargo stability percentage that starts at around 100% and trends down with that timer. As the timer counts down, there are three sets of alarms you're going to hear, each indicating the approximate time you have left before your precious but evil cargo goes critical. The timer stops counting down when you store your ship, or at least it allows a moderate delay so your top priority should be getting to the ASOP terminal at the space station lobby and storing the ship as quickly as possible. This delay will give you a few extra minutes to get to the refinery without the looming specter of the dreaded countdown timer. Although, I would advise against leaving unrefined quantanium in a storage ship for more than a few minutes. The timer will also get delayed if your ship gets impounded, which happens when you try and touch down on a landing pad that isn't assigned to you. You could use this to your advantage if you'd rather not race against time in the elevator. The first alarm starts at around 7 minutes remaining, when the cargo drops below about 50% stability. You'll see a yellow volatile material warning light on your ship's display panel, letting you know that your cargo is losing stability. While this is annoying, you still have enough time to quantum travel to your nearest refinery and land before it becomes a problem. Although, if you haven't started your quantum travel yet, this is your warning to get yourself moving in the right direction. At any point after the yellow alarm starts chirping, you can activate the Jettison All Cargo option by pressing Left-Alt-J. 
This will dump all cargo stored in your vehicle, including any non-volatile materials you might have picked up earlier. The second alarm starts at around 2 minutes, when the cargo drops below about 15% stability. The volatile material warning light shifts to orange and begins a more urgent shirt. If you aren't in view of your refinery at this point and close to requesting a landing pad, then you're definitely going to be cutting it close. This is when you need to make the difficult decision to jettison your cargo or risk losing your ship. With less than one minute remaining, as the cargo drops to 0% stability, the warning light shifts to red and the alarm tone goes into overdrive, making sure you know that something terrible is about to happen. If your ship isn't already on a landing pad with you headed to the terminal to store your ship, then your ship will be destroyed. So your only option now is to jettison the cargo. As a helpful tip, you can use the jettison volatile cargo option to your advantage under certain scenarios. If you were out carrying a partial load of non-volatile materials and then happened upon a really nice quantanium rock that you want to fill up on instead, just collect a tiny amount of quantanium at the start of your mining effort, then stop collecting material and wait for the yellow alarm to start sounding. At that point, you can jettison your previous load of cargo, making room for the quantanium that you can then pick up. You only need a fraction of an SCU of quantanium to trigger the timer, so don't try and scoop up any more than is necessary. And there you have it, everything you need to know about quantanium mining in Star Citizen. Next up, I review the current selection of mining lasers and provide my recommendations for which ones you should outfit on your mining ship. If you've got questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below and check the pinned comment on this video for any corrections or additional details. You can connect with me on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, and Discord by following the links in the description. And last of all, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, because you might have just learned something new, and who doesn't like that?